America crippled from within. The Chinese communist regime has infiltrated every level of the United States, from how we get our food to our education and even our leaders. In this special report, we look at how the communist regime has managed to do that, what's at stake and what can be done. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. It's been said that economic power is political power. But just how does that translate to China's manufacturing dominance and America's reliance on it? It turns out the Chinese regime's influence reaches all the way from the top levels of government down to the agriculture supplies for a state. Let's begin in Iowa. They produce 80 percent of the fertilizer. So here's the thing. The price of fertilizer in Iowa just went up 200 percent in the last year. So if they have cornered fertilizer, they kind of dominate that sphere of agriculture. That gives them a lot of power to define the market. That's Iowa State Senator Jim Carlin. But on top of the money involved, there's another risk when China has that much stake. It means agriculture in our country is shut down without them. You can't, that's a national security issue. You cannot allow yourself to become that vulnerable. Speaking of vulnerabilities, it's not just fertilizer. China also produces 80% of another critical resource, not just for one state, but globally. They produce 80% of the world's rare earth minerals, which, you know, now we're talking about electric cars. You can't make electric cars without those. China produces 80% of them. And the issue there, obviously, is if we were to go to electric cars, which the Biden administration has already said half of all vehicles will be electric and, you know, by 2030, that would devastate, probably even wipe out Iowa's ethanol industry. And again, if they produce 80 percent of the rare earth minerals, we're kind of at their mercy. We cannot allow ourselves to be that vulnerable to China. Making up a set of 17 metallic elements, rare earth is used in everything from batteries to fighter jets, computer hard drives, and as Carlin pointed out, hybrid cars. So what does that global dependence on China mean? Well, China realizes, and they're right about this, that whatever defines you economically is ultimately going to define you politically. The U.S. is already working to lessen that economic dependence. That we can't build uh, a future that's made in America if we ourselves are dependent on China for the materials that power the products of today and tomorrow. So what's being done? The U.S. Department of Defense recently awarded mining company MP Materials a $35 million contract. That's to build a new processing facility. The funding came on top of the $10 million the Pentagon already gave the company. MP controls the U.S.'s only rare earths mine. But the company still depends on China for processing. The money is going toward a new facility that will be used to process heavy rare earth elements, the first in the country. It's part of Washington's goal to secure supply chains for essential materials, especially those used to make defense gear. But why has the U.S. leaned so heavily on China for processing rare earth? Because the procedure creates a lot of pollution. To address environmental concerns, the White House said it would form a committee to recommend changes to the 1872 mining law. The rule has governed hard rock mining across much of the United States since the 19th century. But it's not just fertilizer and rare earth. China's influence extends to the food and meat industry, too. CCP also owns Smithfield Foods, which is the single largest hog processing or pork processing company in the world. And that's on U.S. soil. And our politicians let that happen. And this country needs to have more self-awareness about the economic domination that China intends over our country, because it is a matter of preserving our freedom. Chinese company WH Group bought Smithfield in 2013 for a whopping $4.72 billion in cash. Smithfield is the largest U.S. pork company. WH Group also owns Asia's biggest meat processing company.
Despite its Chinese ownership, Smithfield's website says it does not and will not import any products from China to the U.S., adding all products are made in America. While concerns are rising over Chinese influence in America, those worries haven't been enough to stem the tide. Ross Kennedy, founder of Fortis Analysis, recently researched the China-based Fufang Group. The company makes bio-fermented products derived from corn. They are used in goods ranging from animal feed to pharmaceuticals. Fufang is now primed to open a factory in North Dakota. So what's the problem? It's slated for construction just 13 miles from the state's Grand Forks Air Force Base, a location Kennedy says may have been specially selected by the Chinese regime for use as a monitoring and surveillance operation. He says there are enormous amounts of data going to and from this location, and when there's direct line of sight to the receiving or transmitting facility, the options get an awful lot better for anyone to begin to create traps for that data. The analogy I would use is, is if you're trying to capture data uh, that the United States Air Force is handling, uh, being somewhat close to uh, a major base like that is a bit like putting a cup under a waterfall. Uh, you're going to a lot of these newer technologies that have uh, begun to emerge over the last few years uh, make it a lot easier to at least capture that data and analyze it, even if it's encrypted. Sometimes just being able to know what direction it's coming from and where it's going to uh, is enough to cause major harm. On top of data security, Kennedy also brings up another possibility. Nefarious actors being able to monitor the physical movement of people, equipment and aircraft to and from the base. Anything about Grand Forks Air Force Base that makes it so attractive if you wanted to potentially cause some disruption to the United States military is the fact that it is a major uh, what's called an ISR or intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance base. Uh, it has our largest wing uh, of Global Hawk Recon drones uh, and is a major installation for the gathering uh, analyzing and transmission of critical intelligence. Despite those issues, the project has been called a historic investment and game changer for farmers. According to Keith Lund of the Grand Forks Region Economic Development Corporation, it's also been dubbed the largest single private capital investment in the region's history. So what's being done about it? I have to give an enormous amount of credit to a number uh, of local citizens there in Grand Forks. These people have, have really without any real agenda other than trying to do what's right for their families, their businesses, their community, uh, have stepped up and said, you know, this is completely inappropriate. This is none of this makes sense. It's all out of bounds. It's a threat to the U.S. So they're working on a um, which I think is very clever. They're, they're working on a petition One got 14 days to do it. But if they can get to 4,000 signatures, it's going to allow them to take this vote away from the city council and put it on the ballot as a, as a full public vote, uh, you know, similar to any other ordinances that would be voted on uh, by the public. As for other strategies under consideration. At the same time that's happening, though, there is a massive but somewhat slow regulatory apparatus that is already uh, now aware of this project and it's going to slowly start reviewing it and that's the Air Force, that's the Department of Defense at large, that's um, CFIS, which is the Committee on Foreign Investment in the U.S., uh, which is the Department of Treasury and of Commerce. But with these fears mounting and getting pushed further into the spotlight, how is the Chinese regime still able to build footholds in America? So there was a book recently put out by Peter Schweitzer the title of that book is Red Handed. The book is about how the CCP has bribed U.S. politicians to get what they want. Because if you can dominate economically with the very entities that donate to campaigns of politicians, eventually the industries define the, the politics instead of the people. Red Handed sheds light on how Chinese money has infiltrated every level of America and through that infiltration gained influence. Names in the hot seat include the current President of the United States, Senators like Mitch McConnell and Dianne Feinstein, big wigs on Wall Street, businessmen like Elon Musk and Bill Gates, and even prestigious universities like Yale. Schweitzer notes one Democratic senator who famously said his vote isn't for sale in the Senate, but, quote, is available for rent. 
China knows that it can influence uh, governors, state legislatures, local politicians. It's a lot easier to give them 30 pieces of silver and a box of promises uh, than it is to try to go through the proper regulatory review at the federal level. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tactic that they, they, they exploit. Um, it's something that is a major weakness of the United States is the ability uh, for the states to bring these kinds of projects in without any sort of scrutiny or review. Beijing's influence quietly wove its way into many of the U.S.'s most critical inroads. And now, with that influence seemingly going nowhere fast, what can be done? This Grand Forks project, there's an awful lot at stake, not just for the people of Grand Forks, which is the first and primary concern, but also for the United States military and, and the United States of America in general. So my hope is, is that this issue can become something of a rallying cry to help us figure out what to do about all of the other circumstances in Grand Forks and everywhere else around the United States and around the world. Carlin says Americans have a duty to inform the next generation about Beijing's true threat. They're not this big-hearted, loving, compassionate group of people they portend to be. They're not helping you, they're building you a cage. If somebody can take away your right to defend yourself, your right to free speech, your right to private property, the right to define your kids consistent with your moral values, somebody can tell you where and how you can travel. They're not your friend, they're your slave master. And the next generation needs to see that the whole way you define yourself as a person is being incrementally taken from you. And we want to save you from that. We don't want that to happen to you. We want you to live out your hopes and dreams for your life, to build the kind of life you want to live. He points out that the hard-won liberties fought for in the Constitution could disappear. And the people on the other side of this, they don't want you to be free. And we're all going to have to collectively stand up to them in as many platforms just like this as we possibly can. We've got to get the truth out. And the tyrants of this world, they're afraid of intelligence, they're afraid of free speech, they're afraid of unity, and because they rule by fear, they're always afraid. They're very paranoid. They look for all kinds of ways to control people because they, they themselves live under fear, so they're very beatable because they're weak morally. There's, there's no loyalty among thieves, and these people are thieves of human dignity. Experts warn if steps aren't taken, and taken quickly, the Chinese regime can cripple America from the inside out. Without the need to wage war with military might, but rather through everyday operations, like how we get our food, our education, and our leaders, who help shape America's future. That's all for today's China and Focus on YouTube. We are now sharing a shortened version of our program on YouTube. That's after being demonetized for a year. Full episodes can be watched on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up for a 14-day free trial, please click the link down below. Thanks for watching China and Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and see you tomorrow. It's so inspiring. It makes me want to go dance. Breathtaking. It's very impressed. I'm taking my program and I'm going to mention it on the news because I think it's a great performance and people should see it. What I loved about the show was the authenticity of it. It was taking me on a journey. Exceptional. The technique involved that. The thousands of hours of training. People just float. Everything was exact and then they worked to the exact moment and it was beautiful. You go away feeling with a smile in your heart from it. Have to come. Life-changing. Make sure you see it. Make sure you see it. Don't wait. Don't Get your tickets wait. now.